Okay, good morning, folks. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Okay, there we go. Good morning. Um, so 39.33 is my guess on the day, trading 40.17. We, um, we um, went short yesterday. Well, Epic went short. It's only short one, one thirtieth. And um, I went, went short to uh, one tenth. So I'm actually three times the size that Epic is relative to account. But um, last night we uh, spent the night coding because uh, we've been trying to code when oil does this, this wet blanket, wet noodle thing. It's not easy to get the code right on it. And um, so we spent the night uh, with the developers. They um, wanted to know all the indicators I was looking at yesterday to make that call because I've been watching like I haven't traded in weeks. Epic, of course, is trading, has been trading actively, but I'm not. And so. Um, we went through those details last night, so hopefully the code updates uh, help catch the wet blanket. Now, you know, you may want to take your profit any time because it can bounce any time and sell off is over. Um, I'm um, likely not. Like I, th I think my call is probably fairly sound that thirty-nine thirty area. It certainly, to me, it makes sense here, considering like, I'm just looking at these two hour candles here, these tails, you know, they bought all that up. So, I mean, this is the area, if you look at it horizontally, right? But if you look at it in terms of trend line or the fan, you know, it's down here. So, you know, and there's a hundred tick difference there. So the bulls might bounce, but if they bounce, watch the underside resistance, uh, 4074. Like there's no reason why they won't get 50 ticks or even, you know, 60 here. So the bulls have a lot of reason to bounce here. So then your underside uh, resistance areas become key resistance here soon. So starting, let's just uh, mark them. And that's probably, you know, that's the most probable scenario here at open, that they run up to these, either this one or this one. And of course, whether or not they get there and the trade action when they're there, is your primary primary uh, indicator. So just so that I've been fair here, I'm gonna make sure that I alert this here. Key watch is underside uh, trend line. So previous trend line support now resistance on two hour charting. If bulls take a bounce. 
early today and the trade action when price nears the previous support now resistance you may want to consider taking profit to short I am not but that is the case. So at least I've said it, you know. Um, so that's oil trailers. Okay, so we got that part out of the way, and then we got to consider time cycles, right? So you got 745 and you got 1045 today. So 845, 915 is your time cycle, mid, right? Mid time cycle. So that happens to coincide now. So there's another reason to take profit. So there's reason on uh, the five minute, there's reason on the two hour. So I'm just um, bringing your case forward, right? And then on the one hour, this one hour model, there really isn't reason, but I'm sure I could find it. Um, on the one minute machine model, not very far below is good reason for them to bounce. And on the Epic model, there, you know, this is a quad uh, wall or channel support, but key supports at 90, right? 39, well, 85, 84, 39, 84. And down here is where I think we're probably gonna get to today. But I mean, it's a bit of a random call. So though you know those are the arguments. I I want to play it out more because um, I would like to see the um, I would like to see this play out. You know, like I I'll probably size in some more shorting if they get up in here. But the thing is, man, the way oil trades, it could just and you got to watch the news flow too, right? On a side note, uh, TUP is rocking. Uh, well, I guess not so much this morning, but I didn't really comment a lot on it yesterday. We got quite a hit there yesterday. It was up into the mid 16s. I trimmed all the way up. Uh, Boeing is sitting right near its um, support level. APRN is um, a new swing along from yesterday and we're up this morning just a bit and riots off a little bit. That's a new swing for us, but you know, we've been trimming into the pop, so that's doing well for us. And then same thing with Bitcoin. So they're all doing well for us. Um, and Boeing is near a possible trigger, but I would be very cautious on that trigger. So anyway, that's some of the equities that I'm watching and crypto. Jen's moving people between servers right now, doing her best. Uh, we're having real problems this morning because of the storm in the area. I don't think we're going to keep the room up, just so you know. She's 
just doing her best. We'll keep rebooting, you know, every time it crashes, I'll just reboot everything. Unfortunately, the storm is just bad enough to give us grief. I got all my windows and doors open. It's not, you know, it's not crazy. Hopefully a projectile doesn't fly right. So the bulls are holding the area here in the um, mid time cycle. So then what you do is if you're trading it, just watch your 200 MA on the 15 second and then your 200 MA on the one minute. And that's your best indicator, you know, on a very tight time frame. If you might be at risk short, it depends on where you shorted. I'm going to very probably let this play out. I'd like to, you know, if possible, get size. We weren't sure exactly where the inflection was on the time cycles because, well, you'd have to watch all the videos, but it looks like we're dialed into them. But this isn't a big time cycle in here. So it's finicky, right? It can, like it might just hit, have its little, you know, problem, and it could only last half a day, right? <clears throat> so you do have to be somewhat nimble. The next big one, of course, is September 11th, and then the one after that, December 21st. If you haven't watched the videos, that's where the big ones are. And a week of either side of those weeks, right? So September, the week of September 11th, and either side, a week of that week. So there's a pocket of three weeks in there, but it lands right in around September 11th, about three days before. So it's you know, around September 8th, 9th, into the 11th, kind of. But we can't get them exact. So it's just a matter of positioning properly for those possible inflections. Volatility is up a bit this morning, almost 10%. Uh, silver, of course, is getting whacked, which makes sense. I mean, retail. Retail's in here, right? All over the place right now. And uh, they're causing a lot of this. I mean, I'm over being fixed, and but we're seeing it in everything, right? Where it just gets overbought, oversold. I mean, it started with oil, right? Well, it really started with volatility when the Fed started the repo market heavy. Um, volatility went off the charts. We nailed that. Oil volatility off the charts. Right. So all of that's going to happen with everything. And so you're just seeing the start of it. So we're starting to see it in silver and gold. But it'll happen on all the markets, all the instruments. I'm just happy to see a little bit of volatility in oil here. A little bit of range would be nice. That's what we were asking for. So the bulls uh, risk here is basically what I think it comes down to. And in these scenarios, what we're watching for is the sweepers, the big sweepers, machine sweepers. 
when they come in, then it's time to <clears throat> use extreme caution. In the learning process with the machine development, um, I got killed a number of times thinking I knew what those machine sweepers were doing. It took time to learn, let me tell you. So we're just over six minutes to regular US market open here. So if they get the 200 on the 15 second, that's one thing. The 200 on the one minute is another. And then this here is another. So they have a number of hurdles. So it's the trade action around them. Those important decisions. There's your mid time cycle hit there. So, you know, if I do get my target, you know, it could be this time cycle, it could be this one, it could be any of them. And it might not hit. I'll, I'll just mark it there just to be, well, if you take the trajectory, it should be, you know, really over here, which comes in tonight around, you know, probably a little later, probably around nine o'clock tonight or something. But for now, I'll leave it over here so it's on the screen. So we're looking for that wet noodle action in key decisions, right? And a lot of what I'm saying right now is for our developers because they're uh, they're wanting to make sure that they get this, you know, I don't even know what to call it, right? It's like a wet blanket just goes over the price action and it's been one area of trade that we've wanted to get the coding on because they're big they're they can be really big moves and the indications of trade or the signals are completely different than others that we've you know pretty pretty much mastered but it's such a big area of returns potential returns that we want to you know we want to get as much mastery on this setup as possible it just becomes mastery of setups then of course coding it right and for us as traders it becomes you know execution Okay, so we got a charting problem here, a screen problem. Give me a minute. Okay. This is going to happen throughout the day. I'm sure of it. So I don't know where I left off there, where it cut out, but the bottom line is I'm trying to communicate all this so that the um, developers or machine coding developers can. Um, get this uh, set up locked in the signals for it and so that us as uh, human traders we can also take advantage of the ROI and this setup that I call the wet blanket or wet noodle when oil just sells down 
And then the other thing is that the developers are watching for uh, the machine sweepers, the big ones. Because uh, they move markets in a big way. And that we have figured out. That took a long time. And if I, if, if, you know, if, if it wasn't caught on the recorder there, actually, this isn't being caught on the recorder either. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, you know, it took a few years to figure that out. I got killed a number of times <coughs> trying to follow those large machine sweepers. But, you know, we've nailed that down. Right now, what we're trying to nail down is this wet blanket price action, because if you capture it, it affects the annual ROI on the machine trading and for a per, you know a human trader, in you know, a lot. Like it's probably, you know, ten percent, at least five percent, ten percent probably of annual ROI. It's a lot. So it's kind of the holy one, you know, it's one of the top three or four holy grails, I guess, of oil trade. So I'll be yabbering to as much as I can to make sure, because the developers will want to review this video. So here's the open. Now, usually, conventionally, you want the opposite. Like, if you're short, you want it to pop. Like, the first move is not normally the, the move. It's kind of like EIA. Normally, the first move isn't the move. But let's see what happens here. So remember that 40-40? That's uh, historical. Whenever you see these yellows, yellows and purples are historical. The yellow ones are more serious than the purple. They're color coded for easy reference. They're important marks historically. So 4040 is your key. And then of course the 20 MA on the 30, and then of course your trading box right here, just about. But 4040 is your first test. So it looks like the bulls are going to test that 4040. And it happens to come in right around that 200 MA on the 15 second. And the two, just so you know, the 200 MA on the one minute is right here, which is no surprise. It's right at the one minute model resistance. So the 15 second 200 MA is here, and the one minute 200 MA is here, and 4040 sits right in here right there right in between the two so welcome to the matrix So your first two and a half minute mark is important. So at 9.32.30, which is what we just passed. And then your 9.35 becomes important. 
They'll probably test that one minute resistance up top at 9.35. And then your uh, 20 MA on the five minute becomes important and it's sitting right here. So those are your <clears throat> really tight frame indications. If you're, if you're trading the lowest, uh, tightest time frames. But what I'm most interested in personally and for coding is these resistance areas. You know, really there's, so here comes the bulls. This one there too, right? But this one here is the key. That's the big one. That's 4103. Well, a little lower. 4096 area. So here comes the day traders. There might even be some micros in here. Yeah, Jeremy's saying there is. Nothing serious, but they're in there. They came in at 934, the micros. Between 933, 30 and 934 in that 30 seconds, they, they came in. So it's important that, um, uh, 40316, 40316 holds. If it doesn't, those micros will probably sell off. That's where they were buying. So that, that's it right there. They just touched it. So they're at it right now. So that's their micros pivot right there. Yeah. Do you see how they're pivoting around it? So that's the decision. So what they do is the machines will fire if retail goes with them, you know, they just take it there more efficiently. If retail uh, sells the decision, that pivot, they'll just take it to the next decision more efficiently. So it becomes a matter of watching that price action.
So as far as my personal swing is concerned, I'll probably close it at you know, 39.86 or so, but I don't see Epic closing anything. Epic will probably work the whole thing here. So we got micros in here. At 40, uh, 21. I have to take a quick break. Apologize. I'll be back in a few minutes.
here comes an important test here on the uh, one minute machine grid. So this is support here, 40.01. I'm going to close my personal swing here soon. I just closed it 40.065, my personal swing, Epic still in. Wow. So I'd hit thirty nine eighty five <laughs> and pound and it's bouncing. <clears throat> Lots of volume came in there. Epic covered at thirty nine ninety one, but it's probably going to short again. I hate to alert it, but I have to. Epic cover thirty nine ninety one, one thirtieth hold zero, but likely shorts again. Didn't expect that.
This will be interesting. Something in order flow it's picked up here. We're going to find out soon. Yeah. Price is still coming off. These aren't easy to trade, you know, and it takes time to get the coding right. These events. They're still selling it down. There's not much I can give you here because you know, it's just not, this is that wet blanket, wet noodle syndrome. It's not reacting well to anything. I mean, it did stop at mid quad there for a bit. Epic got out. There's definitely an order flow reason for it. For all I know, Epic might turn here now long. Uh, where are we on? So time cycles. 1045 they got another 45 minutes but if they're if they start firing on the quarter time cycles the 10 uh 10 o'clock is your time cycle so right now but it, it's unlikely but who knows and then we're just getting so close to my target And considering these tails, I guess your worst scenario is probably here. Oops. You know, if you consider the um, worst scenario on the tails, but if you go horizontal, well, we're beyond the horizontal. Should have bounced there. What's the number there? 39.76, I think there'd be a bounce there. 
I'd be careful if you're short here. Just my my observation is we should bounce. That could be why Epic was out there. Jeremy's going to know more soon. A little busy, needless to say. I could be wrong, but I think the bulls are going to rip it soon.
Wet noodles still. Here comes the touch. There's the touch. Comes some volume, machine volume, progressive machine volume, battleground royale right here. This is going to be interesting. Slowly creeping in here. Epic's long three at 3901. 
Careful, careful. High frequency. It can turn around. <clears throat> it can reverse this really fast. The long three thirty is thirty nine zero one. Careful, careful. Add three, add three, hold six. It's add three at three, nine, seven, eight, three, or sorry, three, eight, seven, eight, add three, three, eight, seven, eight, add three. Cell one three eight nine six five three, or three three eight nine seven. Cell one hold five. Thank you. 
Cell 23912, hold 3. So, <clears throat> pardon me, that one minute resistance, it's uh, up against there, the 20 MA below on the 15 second. So you got the pinch happening right here. There's your 20 MA, there's your one minute machine model resistance. You're viewing the 15 second time frame. So one three nine two two five hold two.
Cell one three nine three eight five hold one. Pretty incredible day here for Epic. Nice code updates, Jeremy. Sweet. Really nice action. So right now you've got uh, mid range, right? On your one minute uh, machine model, 200 MA on your 15 second above support here. So the machines are testing resistance here at mid range. And I'm not sure that it bounced at mid range. No, it bounced at the bottom. You should get this 62, 63, but we'll see. So this is the pinch, right? 200 and the 20 with the mid range in between. Again, welcome to the matrix. And of course you got a time cycle coming. So you gotta be 
cautious of that. It's moving into the time cycle right now. Epic closed at 48. It's out. It's done. So 3948 sold the last one. No, it didn't. Sorry. Correction. Oh, that's a bug. Oops. They, we hit a bug. <laughs> Should be out, but not. Dang. Well, that's going to happen with new code. The signal was the cell. It's just that in the code, it was wrong. We'll see what it does here. Jeremy just updated it. That might cost a few bucks for us. Okay, it closed at 3.3. Well, it cost us a few bucks, but I just want to make sure it actually closed. Yeah, it did. That's too bad. Wow, I mean, great. Woo. I better get that on the alert feed, eh? On the uh, Twitter. That'll happen. That will happen with new code. Bit of coding loss at the end there. Not much. So now they'll have to battle. <clears throat> well, that little code error cost about, was it 48 to 38? So that cost, uh, Two contracts, a couple hundred bucks, I guess, eh? Two hundred down, uh, and then, yeah, two or three hundred bucks. Nothing serious. And I just confirmed, yeah, it is out for sure.
Wow, that was nice. Really like your update, Sir Jeremy. Glad we put in the work last night. So I'm going to stop this video and then I'll come back.